Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining along with the folks of Craigsbank Parish Church for our weekly online worship service. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ with grace, mercy and peace. Before we sing our first hymn, allow me to apologize for the quality of my voice. I've had flu this week, thankfully not COVID, but in the process uh, my voice got all croaky. I lost it for a day or so, it's back now, but uh, it's still not at its best. Apologies then. But whether you have a croaky voice or a healthy voice, I invite you to sing along as we sing our first hymn. Shall we sing? Creator God, you have created everything beautiful. You still make everything beautiful. We praise you for the light in our eyes and for the life in our hearts. Open our eyes to see everything in your light. Quicken our spirits to praise you wholeheartedly. You made everything intricate and interdependent. On our own we are but fragile and exposed, but in community we are more, and in community there is more to life. 
Let us then truly appreciate our relationships, appreciating one another, nurturing our community, and cherishing our dependence upon you. For it is within you that we live and move and have our being. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from Luke chapter 19, verses 28 to 38. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are untying it, say, The Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Will tomorrow be better than yesterday? Do you think the future will be better than the past? Your answer to that question says a great deal about how you view the world, how you view society and how you view God. Will tomorrow be better than yesterday? Do you think the future will be better than the past? It could tell me possibly whether you are a glass half full person or a glass half empty person. It could possibly tell me how realistic you are about the future, but also how realistic you are about the past. And for the purpose of today's service, it could also tell me something about the way you view God's involvement in the way that history takes shape. Do you think God is involved in human affairs? Whether God maybe just kicked things off and now leaves everything to wind down or play out and simply keeps an eye on things like a spectator in the heavenly stands. Will tomorrow be better than yesterday? Do you think the future will be better than the past? The way you answer this also says something about our sense of what constitutes better. When I ask if the future will be better than the past, in other words, what metrics do you and I use to measure improvement or deterioration? Climate-wise, for instance, in the foreseeable future, it'll probably get worse. And what about human rights acknowledgement? Hopefully better, the world as a whole seems to be better than 100 years ago in terms of acknowledging human rights. And what about scientific insights? I reckon our insights into the material world has vastly improved over the last 100 years and will probably continue to do so. And overall living conditions? It would seem that in general... People around the world are having life easier in terms of having more access to the bare essentials. But what about the equitable spread of wealth within countries or nations? Here matters seem to be deteriorating as despite the growth in income for the world's 8 billion people, it would seem that the equitable spreading of the wealth within nations has deteriorated and seems to be set to deteriorate as the super rich are amassing more and more, whilst the number of super poor are also increasing. So the gap between the two keeps growing in many countries. 
And what about the Christian religion? Um, will it be in a better state in the future than in the past? Will there be more Christians or less? And does it even matter? Will the impact that the adherents of the Christian faith or the congregations have as organizations, will the impact on society be better and more or worse? And what about the quality of our faith? Is it improving or deteriorating, closer to God's intentions or further away? And what about our collective life as a congregation? Will the future of the congregation be better or worse in future than it was in the past? How will we look 20 years from now compared to 20 years ago? When Jesus was riding on the colt heading into Jerusalem on that interesting day 2,000 years ago, the crowd was swept up and they were excited about this pending future. They were shouting with joy and anticipation about what they believed was about to happen. If we could speak to the women or the men by the side of the road that were lying their cloaks in front of the colt, they would tell us just what a joyful day it is, how privileged they felt to be there because they knew that it was an important historical day. They'd been waiting for it for generations. They knew the time had come. They knew about the prophecies of old that had foretold the coming of a savior, the expected king from the descendants of David that would bring about a special kingdom. They knew that one like a king would come specifically entering Jerusalem and that was happening in front of their eyes. But more specifically, they had heard and some had witnessed firsthand the miracles that Jesus of Nazareth had done. In their midst, there would have been people that had been healed, people who had their well-being restored. They had amongst them people who could testify firsthand about the wonders of this man on the donkey. So they were very positive about the future because they could see how God had prepared the future all the way back in the past already. They knew they could trust Jesus to bring about the great societal reversal because he'd already done so in different villages in the recent past. They knew he would do so again soon in Jerusalem because he had just recently done so in Jericho and in Capernaum. The future was looking bright because the light of God's light of Jesus was shining bright in the near and in the distant past. No wonder they were singing and chanting out loud. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord and peace in heaven and glory in the highest. But let's pause here for a moment. These two phrases are not mere space fillers, mere words of excitement like yippee or hooray. It is like if I were to say the words, O flower of Scotland, or I had a dream. By just quoting these lines, there's so much more that gets called to mind than just a flower or just a dream. That these two snippets that Luke <clears throat> said the crowd he quoted them using were loaded with so much meaning. These are phrases that rang with hope and expectation from the past and the crowd was singing for a reason. The Bible writer that penned it down, Luke, did so because it was rich in meaning. Meaning about the past that added energy and momentum to the future. The first phrase, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, relates back to a very familiar psalm, Psalm 118, an ancient poem. The author of it reminds the Israelites of the wonderful things that their covenant God had done for them, had helped them, had saved them, had restored their well-being. And that same God will send a savior, a kingly person entering the gates of the godly city, 
And there's so much more in that psalm, but time limits us now. I'll just focus on this one element, that there was a future expectation it created based on God's involvement in the past. No wonder that psalm then ends with, thanks to the Lord, because He is good. His love endures forever. The Old Testament theologians often say that the Hebrew faithful would look to the future through the looking glass of the past. Or in other words, they would drive forward by looking in the rearview mirror. The Jewish faithful would take on the challenges of the future based on the way their past had played out. So time, in that sense, is much more cyclical than merely being linear. The other phrase that we hear the crowd sing is, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Now you might recall those words, or a related version of it, being sung by the angels at the announcement of the birth of the baby Jesus way back in Bethlehem. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom God's favor rests. It was almost like recalling the chart topper of the year that the baby was born. Here at the pinnacle of his success as he now rides into Jerusalem. Like reminding the readers of the crowd, remember even the angels were engaged at the birth of this baby 30 years ago. And back then we were told it's going to be special. And now we are here to witness it. So imagine what the future will be like. After all, that was what was promised. So now this promise of peace was about to come into fulfillment in their expectation. Now as I ask you today, will tomorrow be better than yesterday? Do you think the future will be better than the past? Can you look back in your life or collectively as a congregation, can we look back and see the work of God either in God's engagement with us as a faith community or with you and me as individuals? Are we able to see the successes or the miracles of the past as signs of God's faithfulness and of God's loving care? Those highlights of the past, God made it possible. He enabled it. He blessed us to make it a reality. We might since have grown older or fewer or different, but the loving kindness, the faithfulness of God endures forever. God's love has not grown fewer or weaker or less. God's faithfulness and loving kindness endures forever. So why should tomorrow then be worse than yesterday? Surely the future can be just as good, if not better, than the past. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who is comfortable in the invisible, let your will come and be done in the visible. For your will is life and love and light. Jesus Christ, you became the light in our darkness. You embodied the heart of God for all, showing us what love looks like. And you invited us to approach the God of creation in prayer as our very own Father who is in heaven. Hallowed then, Father, be your name. May your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
And now as our time of worship is coming to an end, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you as he smiles upon you. And may he give you peace. Amen.